All right, and we're live. Hello and welcome everyone to today's live stream. My name is Adam Mosny. I head up community here at Overclock Labs, and I'll also be your host and MC for today's event. So today we're gonna to be covering uh, Akash Network's recent upgrade to Mainnet 3 and how Chia Network community members can benefit from all the new features that Akash now provides. If you do have any questions throughout today's conversation, leave a comment in the comments section and I'll get your questions to our guests. Um, we do have a lot of things to cover today. So uh, before we get to our guests, I wanted to kind of give some Akash updates and then uh, we can get right into our conversation. So uh, as many of you know, last week we launched Mainnet 3. Woohoo! Uh, parties and balloons. Um, we're really excited that we did this. Um, authorized spend, fractional UAKT, and a fan favorite, Persistent Storage, is now available on the Akash Network. To learn all about the Mainnet 3 launch, head over to our blog or our documents to learn more. Um, mark your calendars. Uh, in about two weeks, we're going to be at Permissionless in West Palm Beach, Florida. We're actually going to be hosting a meetup with Osmosis. Sunny's going to be speaking on a, a fireside chat there. And we're also going to be hosting another meetup with Storage and Kava. Uh, we will be announcing that and sending out RSVP links uh, shortly, probably the next day or so. So stay tuned for that on our social channels. Um, I want to congratulate Chia. Uh, it's one year from the Chia Minute launch that happened last year, March. John can kind of John Michael can kind of cover some of those things in a minute, but congratulations to you guys. Um, other Chia updates: uh, Chia Network released Chia 1.3.4 with improved GUI at GUI. We still say GUI, right? Uh, and token management and peer-to-peer -peer trading. So congrats on that. And then lastly, uh, there was a release of a public dashboards on Chia and open source blockchain metrics. Um, with over 200,000 public nodes on Chia, it is the, the world's most decentralized cryptocurrency in the world. The world's biggest. Very cool. Um, so there's a quick kind of around the horn updates from Akash and Chia, but that's not what you guys are here for. You're here to hear, hear from Andrew and John Michael. So I want to do some quick guest introductions. So first up is Andrew Mello, head of mining at Overclock Labs, uh, a powerhouse in crypto mining. Andrew's main focus at Akash is to ensure miners are welcomed and supported with while creating new integrations for mining communities to use Akash network. Andrew has been crypto mining since about 2013, so definitely old school. He built one of the largest mining pools in Docker with over 1,000 mineable coins and started his first business when he was just 13 years old. Wow. I think my first business was a lemonade stand when I was like nine. So a little bit before you, but I think yours is a little bit cooler. Um, Andrew earned his degree in international business administration and a double minor in computer science and global communications at American University of Paris. Welcome, Andrew. How are you doing today? Fantastic. Thank you, Adam. For sure. Next up, we have John Michael Hans. John Michael is the VP of storage at Chia, where he works with the storage industry on proof of space and time. Sounds pretty futuristic. He was previously at Intel as a product manager for data center NVMe SSDS. A lot of letters there. He can cover what that means. Uh, he's currently working with Open Open Compute Project on open sustainability, security, or cir circular circularity security. How, how, what is that, John? Michael? Yeah, circularity. Circularity. You're gonna have to explain what that is because I actually don't know. Um, and energy efficiency for storage, as well as leading up a new nonprofit called the Circular Drive Initiative to reduce e-waste and storage. John Michael, welcome. How are you doing today? What's happening, guys? <laughs> cool. Thank you for being here. So I do have a handful of questions to kind of kick off today's conversation. But as a reminder for folks listening in, if you have any questions throughout today's chat with John Michael and Andrew leave a comment in the comment section and I will get your question in on the conversation. So before we get into the details of our partnership with Chia and all that entails, let's talk about Chia and Akash first. So um, I wanted to kind of kick it off with you, John Michael. Let's kind of start at the top. So could you maybe tell folks a little bit about the Chia network? Yeah, I, you know, most people are familiar with our founder, Bram Cohen, who's, I guess, most famous uh, for inventing BitTorrent, but he's been working on Chia since uh, 2017. And uh, Chia is a blockchain based off something we call proof in space and time. It's a new consensus mechanism that uses a Nakamoto style consensus. So longest chain, completely decentralized and permissionless, permissionless random blocks. So it's very like Bitcoin in that regards. But instead of using a high power ASIC miners to do 
mining, we actually just use underutilized storage space to secure the network. So you create these plot files. We can think of these kind of like bingo cards and then you copy them to a hard drive. And then basically they just sit there idle. And then uh, the network calls out these periodic challenges and you check the files in your hard drive to see if, if you have a, a bingo card that meets the requirement. And if you do, you can make the next block and you get a block reward. So it's, it's really cool a way to actually like you know, reduce the power utilization in cryptocurrencies by a thousand X while keeping the security of Bitcoin. And well, today, actually, I mentioned, uh, you know, we believe we actually have more security than Bitcoin if we have 200,000 public nodes. Uh, so it, it's really exciting. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, the barrier to entry for Chia Pharma, you don't have to buy a $10,000, you know, amp miner, you can just buy a hard drive, which everybody has, or, you know, underutilized storage space that they have laying around on their on their hard drive. So it's very inclusive and people can just hop in and join the network. Uh, and some of the stuff we're going to talk about today is with Akash is making that even easier. <laughs> very cool. Thank you, uh, John, Michael. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into uh, to Chia a little bit more here as we kind of continue our conversation. But um, I wanted to toss it over now to Andrew. So similar to uh, uh, Chia, we wanted to kind of see if you could quickly kind of give high level insight into what's going on at Akash and some of the new updates that you're excited about over here. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Adam. You know, one of the uh, major things that we've been focused on at Akash in the last uh, month has really been updating our uh, current mainnet uh, with a new feature set. Um, and that new feature set has um, two things that are super relevant to the Chia community and, and our Chia partnership, uh, which is uh, increased container uh, limits on resources being requested on the network and also the addition of persistent storage. And so the increased container uh, limits that have been introduced now on the main net uh, that is now live uh, is 256 CPUs, 512 gigabytes of memory, and 32 terabytes of storage. So what that means is now uh, for Chia users who have uh, tried plotting on Akash already with Mad Max, which is, you know, for many Chia users they know is hard drive based, uh, we're now ready to support blade bit plotting in, in RAM which is one of the most um, you know, exciting new features we have to, to demo today um, to everyone watching. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So with the uh, increased container limits, what that allows us to do in Bladebit is reduce the time for creating a plot on, on Akash from about 60 minutes down to less than 10 minutes. And um, that really allows, again, uh, anyone, uh, who's looking to, to add hard drives to the Chia network and add compute um, to uh, do proof of work on the, the Chia network, one of the, one of the hardest uh, you know, barriers to entry for them has been plot creation. So um, we've been able to reduce the time for creating their first plot from 60 minutes down to less than 10 minutes in Bladebit. And additionally now, we've unlocked persistent storage, which is gonna allow uh, in, in the future potentially uh, the ability to farm uh, on Akash, as well as the ability to offer uh, large uh, storage arrays uh, for, you know, sale on Akash for other people to uh, potentially farm on or use for other other means. Um, so uh, today, you know, was going to show you the demo of uh, Bladebit plot being created. And also while that's being created, we can talk about persistent storage a bit more. Um, and that's that's kind of the, the thing we're really going to focus on today. Awesome. Thank you, Andrew. So I want to keep it with you. And before we get to the demo, I have a couple more questions. But if anyone listening listening in does have questions for John Michael or Andrew, just leave it in the comment section and I will get them in. So Andrew, so Akash is the world's, the world's first D-Web platform to support plot creation on its network. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about what that means and why you're excited about working closer with Chia. Yeah, so one of the problems that we really solve for the Chia community, again, is this barrier to entry of plot creation. Um, in Before Akash, uh, you know, basically if a user uh, wanted to create Chia plots, uh, they would have to go and contract with a service uh, to do that, or they would have to go and actually build very expensive, very specific hardware to do that one thing of plotting. And so why the partnership between Akash and, and Chia is because we lower that barrier to entry for new users to come onto the Chia network and create their first plots. And what we're gonna show today is again, lowering that barrier to entry in terms of the time it takes to create plots um, and, and how uh, you could scale operations with that. Um, so that, that's really, uh, you know, probably the most important thing that, that um, you know, the, the Chia relationship and partnership represents is, is us helping them 
um, unlock more users to easily access the network um, and, and do that through, through making plots easier to access. Very cool. Um, now I want to toss it over to John Michael here for a second. Um, so Chia has been searching for an easy way to support plotting as a service that can be inexpensive and that supports BladeBit. Um, in saying all this, why are you excited about this relationship? Yeah, so one of the things, um, you know, right when Chia launched, uh, there was a lot of FUD about like, oh, Chia is going to wear out your SSD in a couple of weeks. And that, you know, honestly, obviously that was a little bit overblown. And, um, you know, like we, we explained in, in a high gory detail, like the overview of like SSD endurance and all this stuff. But really the, the most important thing is that new tools have been built to basically build it, you know, completely generate these plots in memory. Now, unfortunately, the amount of uh, DRAM you need right now to do that is actually much more than a consumer system, right? No, no, gen, no average consumer has a desktop that supports, you know, 416 gigabytes of DRAM. So what this allows you to do is create very efficient and inexpensive plots. And then now your bottleneck becomes network bandwidth, where you can, instead of having to go purchase equipment to go do this plotting, which in the past was basically just buy a data center SSD and hook it up to your desktop, a gaming desktop or something like that. That's kind of what typical users do. Uh, but a lot of people, if they don't want to do that, they can have now have this option. Now, the other cool thing about the Akash service is we can bolt this on as a back end to other services. So you know, people can ba basically make much easier farming apps that can kind of fill up people's hard drives in the background. And we're working on some stuff to make farming much, much, e much, much easier. Uh, and that this is one of the things where we can just kind of uh, look at people's storage space, find out and say, oh, yeah, you have some free space in the background. Can we fill up your drives while you sleep? Uh, you know, fill it up from the network. And uh, so this this will enable some new use cases for Chia, especially, you know, smaller users that only have a couple terabytes and they don't want to, you know, mess with, uh, you know, making a dedicated plotter. But we want to make all this seamless. But th these are kind of like the tools that we'll be able to use to make make that happen. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the provider. I, I'm actually running a Akash provider and I'm, you know, letting people access like some of the best, highest end, you know, fastest plot creation servers that, you know, that, that are out there today. And now people can actually just use those to create plots on demand. So. Very cool. So you mentioned farming and I kind of want to talk about farming for a quick second. Um, putting on my, my crypto noob hat uh, and for folks listening in that may not be familiar, could you just high level explain what farming is exactly? Yeah, so I mentioned there's there's really two distinct phases in Chia. Unfortunately, this causes a lot of confusion. So the plotting phase, it needs to be hard enough where it doesn't devolve into proof of work. Like if we made the plotting too easy, then people would just do that instead of storing the data to hard to a hard drive. <laughs> so it needs to be kind of like hard. And you know, like Andrew mentioned, like uh, you know, right now the fastest plot, you know, they're around four or five minutes plot creation. So if it was any faster than that, like 30 or 40 seconds, then it would be too, a little bit too fast. And it would, so we had to crank up the constants. And so with this plotting is you create these 100 gigabyte files. And the, the whole magic of this is you can think of it like proof of work, but you're only doing it once. <laughs> like in proof of work, you basically do all the work. And then every 10 minutes in Bitcoin, when you get a new block, you have to start completely over. <laughs> you have to throw out all the work you did. You have to start with a new block for the, the highest block. In Chia, you can just write that to disk, and now you have that forever. You can have a file that you can move around from disk to disk. It's just like a regular file. And so the, this plotting is kind of the initial initialization phase. And you can think of farming as the actual method of like securing the network. You have these plot files. They're stored on a hard drive. And now it's this very energy efficient, uh, quick and easy verification of these plot files. Uh, we have this farming service that basically runs and just scans the plot files uh, every time the net, uh, you know, the network sends a challenge, but farmers in Chia are actually running a full node. And this is basically how we achieve, you know, this 200,000, uh, you know, full nodes is we've made the full node very, very easy to run. Like the minimum specs for farming are just a Raspberry Pi in a you know, $30 SSD for the database. Uh, so the, the farming and then whatever hard drive you want to store your plots on. So the, uh, yeah, the, the barrier to entry for farming is very low. Uh, but th this hardest part is like getting, the, getting the plots created. Uh, but there, there's these two very distinct phases in Chia, which again, unfortunately causes a lot of confusion because it's a brand new consensus. Of course, people aren't familiar with this because it's not proof of work. It's not proof of stake. It's something completely different. So, Got it. Okay. Okay. That, I think I'm getting my, my rep in my head around it. So um, keeping with you, John Michael. So once a user has either generated plots or someone else has generated for them, they will begin the process of transferring them to persistent storage for farming. Um, could you kind of take me through that process real quick? 
Yeah. So like today, if you're you know running this on a desktop, you would basically just have your ephemeral storage, which is like a temporary SSD. And you'd use that as your scratch space to create these plots. And then when they're done, you just sequentially copy them to the hard drive. So in the Akash model, basically now you've moved that to just basically you can generate the plots in the cloud, you know, on demand in memory. And then now you just download them. And so, you know, people will click, you know, we, we've kind of tested some different uh, internet bandwidth situations, but basically if you have like one gigabit fiber, you can download a plot now, hundred gigabyte file in about 20 minutes, you know, on lo slower speed connections, like 300 or 400 megabit, you can download a plot in like 40 minutes. So, uh, you know, this network, you know, it's still a lot of data being moved. And so people that are doing this at like a large scale will have to, you know, get a kind of like higher class, inter you know, internet, uh, you know, work with their ISP. But like, we, we want to make it easy so somebody at home can go download a plot in 20 minutes, um, you know, on their home internet connection. And so this is, this is again, another fun way to get people like into the Chia network. Maybe they just do it for a couple, um, you know, Andrew and I have talked a lot about partnering with some of these other people that are making these consumer type farming gear. Because it's kind of one farming is just fun. That's why a lot of people in the Chia community are still sticking around. Uh, it's just, you know, you're basically securing the network, this whole uh, idea of like supporting a decentralized cryptocurrency. Um, yeah. And I can vouch for farming is fun. I, I grew up in Wisconsin and <laughs> my family's all farmers. So like, God bless the farmers. Um, I want to talk about plotting hardware for a second and toss it over to Andrew. So Many Chia users have invested thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in hardware for plot generation. Once they've filled their persistent storage with plots, they no longer need this high-end hardware. So Andrew, in saying all this, what does this relationship with Chia offer to folks that now have this hardware? Um, how can Chia plotters become Akash providers? So uh, for the, the folks out there listening uh, that have built you know, some of the the very expensive uh, plotting machines. Again, these are machines that cost uh, sometimes north of five thousand um, dollars, and even sometimes north of ten thousand dollars. You know, once they have um, done kind of the job they've been built for, which in this case is you know creating chia plots. Uh, let's say, for example, again they've they've already plotted for a farm that's you know a half a petabyte or maybe a, a multiple petabyte farm, and now again they have you know uh, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of of a very, very specific hardware lying around. Uh, we have a new home for it on a cosh, basically. Uh, so if that um, you know, person with that hardware wants to now start to contribute that compute to our network to serve uh, other Chia plotters out there who want to uh, create plots on their hard hardware and then download them or have them uploaded to a SSH destination, uh, again, they should definitely uh, start to look at uh, what becoming a provider on Akash entails. And, and on that note, uh, we do have an exciting announcement today. Uh, we do have a new hire uh, at Akash. Uh, we now have a provider success manager. Uh, so Andre is his name. And uh, if you reach out to any of our support channels, you reach out to any of our um, you know, uh, uh, contact uh, channels on, on our documentation, uh, we will make sure that you get in touch with Andre, who will make sure that uh, when you create your provider and put it on Akash, that it will receive Chia workloads, that it's properly configured for Chia uh, plotting, and that it's going to be able to support both Mad Max and Bladebit. And if you know your uh, provider can support both, that's really one of the most uh, profitable ways to be a provider on Akash. Uh, speaking of that, uh, a Chia workload on Akash, on average, you know, for a um, Mad Max uh, workload would look like about 120 to 160 dollars per month per workload. Um, so again, very advantageous for the provider to configure support for that. And then uh, with a modern RAM-based blade bit plot uh, using you know 450 gigabytes worth of memory, so the machine is configured with about 512 gigabytes. Um, that workload is looking at generating about 800 dollars per month. Uh, per node that's configured for blade bit. So uh, again, 512 gigabytes is only gonna be able to do one of those workloads. Uh, so that's a little bit of the back of the napkin math of why it's definitely worth anyone out there that has uh, Chia plotting hardware to take a look at uh, becoming a provider on Akash because uh, again, to go out there and, and put this hardware out there and make it available for others to plot on it is a very um, can be very uh, profitable depending on what your costs are for electricity, bandwidth, 
cooling, any, any other monthly overheads that are going to, um, you know, um, uh, eat into those, those workload earnings per month that were, were kind of mentioned a, a few minutes ago. Very cool. Um, and as we all know, uh, back of napkin math is the best math. So uh, thank you for that, Andrew. So yes. I do have uh, one final question before we kind of start to go into audience questions. And I'm seeing a bunch showing up here in the chat. So keep them coming. Um, and then we'll also do a very quick demo, which Andrew will provide. So um, still on Andrew. So Akash uses its blockchain to manage your container deployments and accounting. To deploy an Akash, you will need your fund your wallet. Um, previous to the recent upgrade, each time you created a deployment, 5AKT was needed to be used for escrow and to fund the deployment. Now with fractional UAKT, deployment costs go down. What does this really mean um, for the Chia community? What feature or what, with this new feature, what does it open up for Chia community users? So uh, fractional UAKT is really gonna unlock the potential for any provider uh, to offer persistent storage that could potentially be used for farming. So back to the back of the napkin math, uh, presenting 32 terabytes on the network, you would need to have a monthly cost of that of less than about $20 a month to make it profitable to farm on Chia. And this is a question we've gotten all the time. You know, why would anyone do that? Uh, excuse me, to farm Chia on Akash. Why, why would anyone do this? Well, again, you don't know what the provider monthly costs are and what if any, you know, cost they have for that storage. So uh, for any providers out there that are looking or thinking about uh, providing a large storage array on Akash, um, remember that our container limits have now been increased to 32 terabytes. So the most amount of storage someone could request in a specific one workload would be 32 terabytes. And then um, additionally, having bandwidth to back up that, that persistent storage and access to that storage is also important if, if you're looking at this from the provider side. Um, you know, again, one gigabyte uh, symmetric is, is kind of the minimum specification if you're really going to be doing anything with persistent storage, uh, allowing people to upload plots, for example, to your provider, which again will be, I think, a video we need to do a little bit more on down the road. Uh, when it comes to farming, uploading, persistent storage, and, and kind of unlocking that entire feature set. But uh, fractional UAKT really brings the, the potential of uh, farming on Akash in the future if the uh, provider has you know, a storage cost uh, that is low enough for them to, to present that storage on the network. Very cool. Cool. And I think with that, it's time for a demo. So while Andrew is doing his demo, uh, if anyone has questions, just leave them in the comments section. And at the end of the demo, we will run through the list of questions. So let's take it away, Andrew. I will add your screen here and that should be live. So go ahead and take it away. It is great. Uh, just so everyone knows where, where we're starting here, this is Akashlytics, our uh, desktop deploy tool. You can access it at www.akashlytics.com. Uh, and, and we have, um, again, already updated uh, this application with a, a template for Chia. And we have been supporting Mad Max plotting uh, for the last uh, few months. And now, uh, again, we're going to be able to demo some Blade Bit today. Uh, so let me get that started. So the first thing we do is you go to Create Deployment. We can go to Browse Template Gallery. And then here you can find all of the apps that will run on Akash. We go down to mining. Here we're gonna find Chia, just click on that. Then we're gonna go to deploy up here. So the first thing you're presented with is a uh, STL or a standard definition language file. Um, for anyone who uses uh, Docker Compose or YAML, this should look uh, pretty familiar. And the only thing we really need to do uh, to uh, do a blade bit plot is change some of the variables here. Um, and we will be updating uh, down the road with, with um, some more recommended configurations for blade bit in our documentation. Uh, so you should check there for that. But the first thing anyone has to do is fill in the contract and farmer key. So as we do that, push that back over. Okay, our location for the plots is going to be local. What that means is that you can access your plots through a web interface, which is a full-blown file manager. Um, so you'll see some logs there. You'll see the, the plots there available for download, and it will create the link. The other option is to use uh, the upload function, and that will connect to a SSH destination. And um, 
queue the plots for uploading and, and start syncing them as soon as they're ready. And, and once a plot is finished, it will start uploading that and continue plotting on. So it will create you know, multiple uploads in parallel over time if using the upload function. And if you use the upload function, uh, remember that you also need to come down here and enable these variables to set the destination path for your plot. And that's, that's how you enable the um, SSH uploading to a destination. So just for the purpose of the demo, we'll stick with local for now. We're gonna change the plotter from Mad Max to Blade. Uh, as mentioned here, you know, the two options are Mad Max or Blade. Um, we obviously are not in testnet only anymore on Blade, so go ahead and, and put it in there. Uh, for threads, we are gonna use a default of uh, 48 threads for our Blade bit plot and the upload background we can leave as is. We come down here and we also wanna make sure the CPU units match our new spec of 48. Uh, and then here we also need to increase our memory to 420 gigabytes of memory uh, to support the blade bit spec, which is I believe 416. Uh, so with all of those things in place, uh, we can now go ahead and click create deployment. A uh, five AKT, as the standard, uh, just to get things going, you can always add funds to your deployment uh, once it's been created. And then we're just gonna wait here a few seconds for the network to come back with some bids. And uh, John Michael, do you wanna uh, make any comment about your experience so far, uh, You know, trying this out on the network and, and how things have gone for you? <laughs> Yeah, as uh, Andrew mentioned, you know, I'm, I'm running a provider and uh, I'm learning a lot about uh, the internet bandwidth uh, at ISP. So uh, we're we're actually up, upping the bandwidth. I'm, I'm in the process. You can see this one that he uh, that just showed up here, big tractor plotting. That That is uh, my provider. Um, we're going to be upgrading that to uh, 10 gig here pretty soon so we can support, you know, a full full 10 gig up, up, upload download. So uh, hopefully network bandwidth won't be in the way of, of anybody's plotting downloads. But Again, this is really cool because now if you think about like, again, if you're if you're doing this at scale or you want to have a startup that is, you know, focused around Chia or something, you know, we are working with um, you know, some people in the industry to basically put some other, you know, put, putting this on the back end of some other front end tools that have like a Chia or, or you know, US dollar interface. But, uh, you know, you, you'll see here in the pricing, we, we've kind of tuned the pricing. We're trying to start out at like, you know, 20 cents a plot or like $2 a terabyte, which is... Uh, you know, significantly cheaper than, um, you know, than, than we, what we saw on other sites that were trying to offer this, like plotting as a service. Uh, it's, you know, in the, in the craziness of last year of, um, you know, like during mainnet launch when Chia farming was like insanely profitable for a few months, uh, you know, people were trying to charge like 40, $40 per terabyte, which is absolutely insane. But, uh, you know, yeah. um, and, so, uh, and just to, to speak to that point about pricing. So a uh, big tractor plotting is, uh, more or less the Akash official provider. Uh, so with that, that being said, you can expect 20 cent plot prices on big tractor plotting and everything has been uh, focused on that with the defaults that you'll find in Akash Lytics. And additionally, um, again, we will add more blade bit uh, specific documentation on the website uh, to support those configurations. Um, so we're gonna go ahead here and accept the bid. Just go ahead and do a approve. We're creating the new lease here. And again, in this local mode, uh, we'll have access to a file manager. And then in the upload mode, the plots will be created and then um, will be uploaded. You will see them in the file manager uh, as well. So you'll have access to that, um, but they will start disappearing over time as they get uploaded in the background. So here we go. The first thing to come up in Akashlytics is always gonna be the events. And this shows whether or not the actual um, uh, container uh, actually started. And you can see that here where uh, scaled up to replicas um, on, on the specific node. And then we can go to logs here. And we're gonna see, uh, I can go a little wider here. Can you guys see that now better? The width? Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. Um, so this is the first little message you're gonna get in the logs, uh, basically saying that plots will be created locally and that um, you wanna check Akashlytics for the URI or the universal resource uh, indicator here. Um, and so we find that under leases tab. So what we're looking for is this, this link right here with the URI. I'm gonna go back to the right side so everyone can see again. 
And what this is gonna do is, is open a link up to the, the file manager uh, where again, the plots will actually show up. You can download them. And so uh, let me just open the logs here and let this run. And uh, John Michael and I can chat. This plot should take us uh, about seven minutes um, as benchmarked. And um, we can kind of run through some numbers potentially, John, uh, with the benchmarks I did uh, most recently as well uh, with the new mainnet upgrade. Yeah, the, you know, I, I kind of mentioned, right, if you're on gigabit, and you're downloading a plot and it takes 20 minutes, then okay, if you're making a plot every five minutes, then then you're, you're bottlenecked by the network. So you kind of have to figure out, okay, you know, I should just reduce my threads until I'm getting a plot generated about the time it takes me to download one. And that will be kind of like the best cost structure. Um, if you have super blazing fast internet, then in the future, when I get this uh, 10 gig upgrade, you'll be able to just fire off as many as you want. Now, the really cool thing is uh, right now I have, uh, you know, four servers uh, on the provider. Um, I'll probably end up putting a lot more once we get the 10 gig on there because it was bottlenecked before. But you, you can think of this. You, if you want to go download plots, now you're only limited by the network bandwidth. You can download as many as you want. You can start them in parallel on many machines. Um, and, uh, you know, someone mentioned, you know, hey, this looks a little bit confusing for, you know, somebody who hasn't, you know, messed with the cosmetics and stuff. But I, I can assure you, you know, you basically just copy paste the SDL in there and put your farmer key and contract address in there. It's It's super easy. We'll make it all the defaults in there. But the other cool thing is if you're trying to get a friend into Chia, you can basically uh, find their you know farmer key and contract address and you can make some plots for a friend and you can just send them the link and then they can just download them. Uh, so that'll be another cool little use case where if somebody wants to basically send a couple plots to a friend or something, uh, they can do that. Uh, and I also mentioned that eventually what we want to have other front ends that will accept Chia, that will accept US dollars for these plots, and then it will use a cosh on the back end. And it will, you know, so there's ways to basically have a nice GUI on the front end that you just put in your keys and it will just plot for you and give you a link or automatically download and fill up your drive. So we're, we're working on that with a couple uh, startups that are doing some cool stuff in that area. So. Yep. So we can see here uh, now the compilation of uh, Chia and the BladeBit software has finished and we have activated 48 threads here and uh, phase one has begun. So in, you know, start your timers, um, less than, you know, eight minutes here, for sure, we should uh, have our first plot. And at that time, I will also share the, the file manager, uh, John, so we can take a look at that with everyone once the plot's in there, because it's kind of a moot point without any plots in there to, to show that. Uh, one of the things I wanted to uh, mention was uh, you know, for any users out there that are in a data center environment that have, um, you know, really large scale uh, farms, uh, large scale uh, plotting demand for anything over, you know, a petabyte. Um, if you have access to multi gigabit, you know, connections in those data center environments or, or at your farm, uh, we do have providers that will be supporting multi gigabit. Um, so again, in terms of scalability here, uh, the fastest plot we have been able to generate with BladeBit and our new container limits is uh, a plot in about four minutes and uh, in, in change. So that's with 110 uh, thread count um, on this same machine, actually, that we're running this demo on right now. So uh, again, to really unlock that potential, though, you would need, again, bandwidth greater than one gigabyte because even maxed out one gigabyte can only move, you know, about 14 terabytes a day. Uh, so uh, with that being said, you know, BladeBit, uh, you know, creating plots every five minutes can can outrun uh, the, the total capacity for a one gigabyte connection to transfer in a day. Uh, so now we've we've kind of unlocked such such speed. Um, we, we're now again, uh, very capped depending on, um, you know, where that plot is being downloaded uh, to. Cool. Thank you, Andrew, for that. Um, we're getting a lot of questions from the, the audience. Yeah. So I figured now is a good time to Perfect bring the time, audience yeah. members in. So let me start to share some of this stuff. So this one popped in earlier from Baileyist iCity. Love these screen names. Um, so he's a little bit late, but he's wondering what's the plot cost per terabyte? Is that a fixed cost for the farmer? And then a follow up question I had right after that is, is it a very is it variable depending on the number of plots created? Um, yeah, the, the way we came up with twenty cents is 
uh, it basically it's like, okay, it's cheaper than going out and buying an SSD or dedicated plotting equipment. So the the user actually gets a benefit because they they can you know get fill up their drives for less expensive than it would be to you know buy the dedicated equipment. The provider you know basically makes a little tiny bit of money basically to keep the lights on and uh, the power of the servers and uh, you know the network bandwidth. Uh, and so that was kind of like, and we just said, okay, well that's like less than fifty percent of what's out there today. <laughs> like we we saw so there were some websites offering like I think five dollars a terabyte for plotting so we're just like well two two sounds like pretty good and we think that will be a reasonable thing to start at um in the future right if anybody has a provider they can basically put whatever pricing they want in there if they want to make the plots cheaper than mine that, that's totally fine if they want to make them more expensive they can um but that, that's kind of the cool thing about decentralized plotting is nobody owns this we, we just kind of came up with that too uh, as a kind of happy medium and and my take on the question is uh back of the napkin math says a dollar 85 per terabyte so he knows that uh, that's with a 20 cent, uh, again, plot price here. And then uh, additionally, uh, is that a fixed cost for the farmer? Um, to answer that, um, I, I need a little more detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally cool. Cool. Um, thank you for your question, Baileyist in the city. I think you have another one coming up as well, but we have Ken next. So um, he just want to know more, a little bit more about Playbit. Can Playbit be explained a bit more in detail as far as what it is and what it does? Yeah, um, I kind of mentioned this. Again, when you, when you hear about this Chia, Chia plotting and it's like super high CPU and DRAM and stuff, you're like, God, that sounds like proof of work. But like, you just have to remember that's like, you only have to do this once. <laughs> it's so It's so important and fundamental because like, uh, the energy use required to create that plot. Now you can make this plot in, you know, like with, you know, with the efficiency that we have on the servers that we're, you're seeing are like 0 0.4 kilowatt hours per terabyte of plots. And so this is a one-time energy use thing. And then you don't have to ever use that energy again. Those plots can just live on the hard drives for five to seven years in farm. So this is how we get this energy efficient decentralized cryptocurrency. But Bladebit is basically just an all in memory solution for generating these plot files. So when you write the plot file, basically you uh, do this forward propagation phase where you're writing out a bunch of random hashes. We use Blake three to do that. And then you basically make these plotting tables and the, the tables have, you do this matching function between the tables. And so what the actual plotting process is doing is it lays out all this data. You basically are doing this matching and sorting and then you go back through and do this algorithmic compression to make that plot file, you know, go, going from that 400 gigabytes of temp space down to 108 gigabytes, which is the final plot size. So that whole generation is lots of memory bandwidth. You're basically moving data in and out of the CPU. You're sorting, you know, most of the CPU and memory stuff that's going on in a plot is actually sorting. <laughs> Very cool. Cool. Thank you for that question. Um, I believe that was Ken. Next up, a pretty straightforward one from Scott here. So uh, say I have $100 in fiat, what's the best way to get plotting and farming? Just buy, uh, buy an 8 terabyte hard drive uh, from uh, <laughs> or WD. You know, I think that you buy them 100 bucks at Costco is like <laughs> pretty much it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, you know, if you're just filling up, like, you know, we, you know, we mentioned, like, if, if somebody's just getting started and they have, like, a desktop with a standard NVMe, you know, that's probably okay if you wanted to plot, like, one or two hard drives. But if you're, if you're really plotting, like, hundreds of terabytes, then then you need to start looking into other equipment, right? Like I buy an enterprise SSD or using a cash, of course. Uh, but yeah, hundred bucks, you know, buy a hard drive. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> but, straightforward. Yeah, the, the, the software is all open source and free. You just download it <laughs> and fire it up. Very cool. Cool. Um, and you mentioned energy costs. So there's a, a pretty pertinent question from Ranj. So he wanted to know um, what's the general hit, which I'm guessing he means expense from rising energy costs. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty wild. I mean, I just reviewed the numbers yesterday uh, for another project that I'm working on. You know, we um, basically like for like, say, for instance, in Bitcoin mining, if you have if you got if somebody handed you an S9 for free, they just said, here's a free S9 miner. You can have it for free. You have to have four cents a kilowatt hour to, to, to mine profitably on that. Like, it's so stupid, like that uh, even with a free miner, it's like not profitable. Um, the good thing about Chia is most of the cost is actually up front in, in the uh, actual cost of the storage. Like in a typical TCO model, if you're using kind of high capacity hard, hard drives, like 16 or 18 terabytes, 90% of the cost, the total cost of ownership for all of the farming is going to be the cost of the hard drive itself. Only 10% 
over that whatever five years you're going to be farming is the cost of energy. So people can actually do this farming at a small scale at their home with like residential electricity costs at 14 cents a kilowatt hour. It's not like uh, one hard drive, you know, t- a typical 7200 RPM hard drive that's running for farming consumes about five watts. So that's like 45 kilowatt hours uh, per month. Uh, I believe something like that. So I got to do my math here. Uh, Napkin math. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah. So you know, five, five watts is like nothing, right? You're talking about like compared to like a Bitcoin miner's <laughs> 3,200 watts. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, the uh, farming is really exciting because now you can do this with like out. You, you don't have to have a some crazy competitive edge with like really cheap energy to be a, a you know a chia farmer. You know, the best way is just like you know people are finding out. Okay, well to be competitive in chia, you really want a good deal on the hard drives, and so. We're working with like Seagate and Western Digital to offer recertified drives to our farmers and getting them cheap, you know, use storage that's kind of suitable and good for for chia farming. So that, that's kind of the place where, where we start. <laughs> Very cool. Cool. Um, thank you for that question, Ranj. Um, we have a few more questions before we wrap things up. So I'm going to go back to Bailey's. And I think this is just a general crop question around how to get started. So he's saying, I'm an average PC user and the deployment looks crazy complicated for someone like myself might be easy for someone like John Michael. Um, but as an average farmer, uh, he might lose his head around how to deploy and the deployment process. Um, so I think maybe a good question would be like, where can people go for kind of support or resources to kind of get a better understanding of how to kind of get up and going? And that can go to either one of you guys. It doesn't, yeah. Um, so uh, first of all, to this, to uh, my list, take, but, to, to this user, um, you know, the, the, the main variables that need to be changed are, are very simple. It's the contract and the farmer key. If you just go into a Koshlytics and go through the process I, I just followed with the template and click through on Chia, the only thing you need to update to start creating plots is these two environmental variables for contract and farmer key. After you do that, uh, now I can share this, um, it looks like. See if I can adjust the screen here so I can share the. Um, Adam, I wanted to share my other um, screen here, so I don't know if you need to disable oh, it. Oh, sure. Your end. Yeah. There you go. Just so I can show. Uh, what, oh yeah, yeah, for what, sure. What it goes from. All right. Go ahead and try to share your screen again. It's working. Yep. All right. All right, there you go. So uh, you guys can see everything I believe now, uh, left yep. screen and a right screen. Okay, so on the right is the Chia plot manager. So after the user opens up a Koshlytics, goes to templates, finds Chia, inputs their contract and farmer key, clicks on deploy, they will click on this URI here, uh, this link, which will then take them to the file manager. The file manager, th- Manager then has the plots available in a GUI for the user to to download and interact with. So you can click on this, click on download, and we're off and running right away. Um, so in terms of simplicity, uh, you know, I, I would again um, say that you know the, the user should uh, take a look at some more of our documentation and really focus in on just uh, the contract, the farmer key, and then accessing the plots uh, through the plot manager which they can always find once the deployment's created with this uh, URI. Excellent. Thank you for uh, covering that, Andrew. Um, so you looking at- it, I'll go back to uh, just oh, yeah. analytics now that we've no shown the plot manager there as well. Thank you. No problem. Cool. Um, so I think that about wraps it up for questions. I did want to share this real quick though. Um, yeah. Can we um, just oh, run this, this real quick? Because we, we didn't yeah, have a chance to take a look at the logs. So um, just for anyone who's familiar with the, the blade bit process, I know we we were we had some questions in the middle there while this was going. So uh, we've already created you know more than one plot here. Uh, we can see all of the standard log that uh, the user would expect to see. And then oh, oh, we already, we're on to already the next one here. Um, so uh, again, our plot time creation, uh, you know, on this is is uh, about seven minutes um, with the standard default settings, and we will be again adding additional blade bit settings 
uh, for the users to follow with, depending on the speed and price and kind of output they want. Uh, because as, as we, we talked about today, uh, basically the decision to use Mad Max or BladeBit should also be based on how much bandwidth you have available. So to really maximize, you know, BladeBit, you, you're going to want a minimum of a one gigabyte connection. Anything lower than that, and you're definitely going to want, you know, Mad Max, uh, because again, creating a plot every seven minutes, um, you know, just, just isn't something you're going to be able to access fast enough uh, to make it economically feasible. And then any, anyone out there, again, with multi-gigabit connections, definitely want to be taking the BladeBit routes and, and again, uh, can, can go that way. John, is there anything else that I, I missed there or you want to just follow up with before we... Yeah, again, just kind of, uh, these are just such awesome tools that, again, like I, I was a person there who just go. had high hardware, idle hardware laying around after we were done plotting. And now we have a way to actually basically provide that to other people that want to utilize it in a completely decentralized way. And, I, you know, I can get paid for it and they they win because they can download plots inexpensively. So. Yeah, as Andrew said, like the really the hardest part about this is it's just a lot of data. So you have to go figure out the network challenges and bottlenecks. And as I'm learning, as you know, growing my provider, that you know we just needed more bandwidth. But uh, you know, if, if you're looking at doing this seriously, um, yeah, it's, it's just awesome tools in the toolkit to have for for people that are looking at you. Yeah, and last note there, you know, I um, I was able to acquire just you know a couple of um, 18 terabyte drives over last weekend. Uh, fill them up, you know, literally in just uh, two days with with using a Kosh, and I didn't have to re-enable a machine for plotting or or build anything for plotting or think about what NVMEs to move around into what machines to get them in a RAID configuration. It was it was actually just so much easier to open a Kosh Linux, put in my contract and farmer key, click on deploy, uh, and then wait for the plots to come in and and download them through the plot manager. And, and then again, when I got a little tired of that, I tried to you know, the upload function and was able to just, again, put it in an SSH destination, set it and forget it, came back. And again, my, my bandwidth is saturated now with all the plots downloading. And, and once the drives were filled, I, I was able to just kill the deployments and, and again, move on with my day. So it really made, again, that whole process of taking a bare drive and filling it up with plots uh, very, very easy. And you can see we're getting a lot of love from the audience. <laughs> Um, so thank everyone for uh, your comments. Um, I just want to share this one lastly. Um, I like that you're brilliant at the end. I think he's talking about both of you guys. I don't think he's talking to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so thank you guys for covering that. And I think we're going to wrap things up. So we're a little over in time. So uh, I want to thank our guests, Andrew and John Michael, for participating today in our event. And thank all of you for joining. Mark your calendars for next week, Wednesday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We will be doing another Akash Weekly event then. Um, if you do have any final thoughts, uh, questions, or feedback, or you just want to keep this conversation going, head over to the Akash uh, Network Telegram channel or the Discord channel or even the Discord, uh, Discord forum, our Discourse forum, um, to keep this conversation going. And finally, uh, Akash is hiring, so head over to akash.network and review all of our open roles. Um, from everyone at Overclock Labs, I want to thank you for joining today's event. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, John Michael, for joining. Thank and you, we'll see you guys. Yeah, 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 sure. say, yeah thanks to you guys. Uh, it's it's refreshing in a in this in this crypto space where there's a lot of uh, noise and just garbage. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's it's awesome to see a crypto that actually has a real use case and that you guys are, are actually building stuff that is is useful and decentralized. So thank you. Yeah, I love it. Cool. All right. And with that, uh, we'll see you guys later. And uh, yeah, see you in the metaverse. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.